Today on How It's Done 101, we're talking about lateral movements. What does that mean, basically? It means that we're moving laterally in and out. So benefits of lateral movement, it engages a different set of muscle groups altogether. Typically, we tend to move forward and back because that's where our eyes go. So we're training those already dominant muscle groups, the quads, the glutes, the back, the chest, and we're not really doing much else for our stabilizing, supporting muscles. So lateral movements help to um, work different muscle groups. It helps with your stability. It helps with your hip agility. strength. Agility and mobility and stability, all the LEs. It helps pelvic strength as well because you're stabilizing through the hips and your pelvis area, right? Which is the key to avoiding injury. Like it all kind of comes from in here. Core stability, it all comes back to here. Okay, so a couple other things that you want to remember with lateral movements, because I can't, so, I'm so sorry, I can't see behind you. <laughs> I'm like, woo, 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 woo. okay. Okay, so lateral movements, another thing that it does, it's really great for your mind because it forces you, um, it forces you to think outside the box because your mind is then working that much harder to stabilize and work through those imbalances, right? And it, it really is a great way to work through imbalances that you might have in your body. So just by moving laterally, if you take one foot off the ground and you move laterally, there's so much more that's happening than if you were to move forward. It's a really great test. So if you were to just lift that leg out in front of you, Okay, we feel the muscles in our quad, we feel the muscles in our core, but take it out to the side. How much more is happening, right? <laughs> the cameraman just did it and nearly dropped the camera. Okay, you focus on me, Director Frederick. I feel like so, I know Fred. Right? We can just say his name. Yeah, everyone knows Fred. So if we take it out to the side, all of a sudden, those stabilizing muscles in your supporting leg turns on. The stabilizing muscles in your knees turn on. Your inner thighs, your outer thighs, your core. Your brain is trying so hard to focus on staying upright. So it really teaches you how to adjust on the fly to stimuli and how to work different muscle groups. Adjust on the fly to stimuli. Adjust on the fly to stimuli. Adjust on the fly to stimuli. Anyways, that's how it's done. 101. Stick around for the finisher, and we'll focus on lots more lateral movement that'll help you trick your brain into working harder. Let's go. Okay. So today we have mobility. Just a quick reminder. We're going to take the tempo down. So we're working through a variety of movements for a minute each. All you need today is your pink thingy. Okay, your mat, and we've each grabbed one dumbbell, one five pound dumbbell. It's not, something light. Yeah, something light, something light. And if you don't have five pound dumbbell, if you got like the heavier pack, you can reach for a bottle of water, a can of soup, anything that you got, or just get those dumbbells. Okay, so first and foremost, we're gonna reach for those pink thingies and we're gonna get our timer going. I want you to stand nice and tall, feet about hip distance apart. First, roll your shoulders back and I'm gonna grab the pink thingy on the second rung in on one side and the third rung in on the other. Then we're taking the band up overhead, pull into the pink thingy as we send it down behind us. Okay, so our timer's going. We've got a full minute on the clock. Roll your shoulders back and down. So as we take those arms up and over, try not to hike your shoulders up towards your ears. This is great for opening that chest. If you spend a lot of time sitting at a desk, we tend to have like hunched over shoulders. If you think about society, like just living now, our arms are always in front of us. To drive cars, to write on computers, to read books, to push strollers and shopping carts, to wash dishes. It's swipe. To swipe. Your hands are always in front of us. Like other than running through a meadow, when are your arms behind you, right? Uh, yeah, swipe, swipe, swipe left, swipe right. So we really want to open up that chest and start to have those postures be more, um, instead of cathartic, where we're folding forward, we want to have nice, strong chests, okay? Built to last. Up and over. Last one. 
Yeah, towel's a great one. That's, that rhymes. Okay, so we're gripping that pink thingy again, standing tall. I want you to really think of pushing into both feet, reaching up through the fingertips, and then we're just gonna pull on the right hand, and that right hand's gonna lead you all the way over to a lateral bend. Now the left hand pulls you back to center and goes all the way over to the other side. So we're alternating from side to side, and rather than thinking of compressing through the right ribs, as you pull over to the right side, I want you to think of reaching tall and flaring the opposite side. So it's about lengthening and mobilizing rather than compressing. Okay, we've got another 20 seconds here. If you're having a hard time with your neutral stance, go ahead and walk your feet a little bit wider as long as those legs are active. So we're pulling up on those thighs. Last seven seconds and how good does this feel? Pull into that band from side to side. All right, roll those shoulders back for a second. Okay, so now we're gonna do something called sagittal arm raises. So one arm stays down, the opposite arm goes all the way up, and then we switch. So the beauty here is you get to pick your level of resistance. If you feel like this is a little bit too easy for you, you can walk your hands closer together. And at the back of your body, we're really feeling the shoulder blades work, okay? and not in the typical way, okay? We're working them in a way that, working different muscle groups than we typically hit because we're alternating as we take it out to the side. We've got 20 more seconds here. Woo, I'm feeling these. They are lighting up my posterior chain. That basically just means the back of your body. Yeah. Four, three, two and one okay let's roll those shoulders back real quick roll them back roll them back okay so now still with that pink thingy we're going to extend the arms out in front of us we're going to pull into the pink thingy with the right elbow and then turn to peek over that right shoulder send that fist back forward before we take it to the other side so you'll notice my hips stay squared towards you the only thing that's moving is my thoracic as I rotate to look over my shoulder. Kind of like you're trying to mind your neighbor's business. You're being real casual. I'm just gonna see what my neighbor's doing over here. So suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. suspicious. It's a suspicious thing you guys are doing. Oh my God, you haven't seen it? It's a TikTok. It's hilarious. Some people are like wildly creative out there and they think of like the best things to do and they just make me giggle. Google, don't be suspicious TikTok and you're guaranteed to laugh your ass off, I swear. <laughs> Last one. Okay. Woo! All right. So now the pink thingy is going across the back of our body. You want to slide it up just below those shoulder blades. I want it underneath our arms, shoulders back. And then we're gonna loop our thumbs into it as we extend the arms out. So think of activating the chest as we push those palms away from you. Like someone's getting too close and you're saying, get out of my bubble, get to step in. No, thank you. We're gonna build on this, but for now we're staying with just the chest press, really activating those pecs as we push the band away. Oh yeah, I feel it. I feel it. it. Jessie has the band over her shoulders, making it a little bit shorter. Mine are under my arms and I've looped it in. Again, whatever feels the most comfortable. You just wanna make sure it's nice and stable on the back of your body and one. So we're gonna stay with those chest presses and add in a squat. So we're extending the arms away from us as we bend our knees, drop nice and deep into a squat. Pull your arms back as we come out of that squat. Exhale, push. Inhale, pull. Got it? Try not to let your knees come in towards center. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Shoulders are lit. Right up. Don't worry, we're gonna get a break. 20 seconds left here. Keep your chest up. We're really stepping up mobility here. Yes, we are. Mobility is just resistance on a lower scale. Four, three, two.
two, and one. All right, so we're gonna get rid of that pink thingy, toss it away, and I want you to stand at the back of your mat. Now we're gonna gently nod our chin into our chest. Let the weight of your head roll your upper body all the way down, really trying to articulate through all the vertebrae of your spine. Walk your hands all the way out to your high plank, and then push into those palms, pike your bum, come all the way back to those toes, scoop your belly button in, and come back up. Okay, really try to make your core do all the work here. Lower down, walk it out. Push into those palms as we come all the way back up. Come all the way up, okay? We've got 12 seconds left here. It is exactly what you needed. How did I know? Is it because we share like a brain? A good wake up in the morning, guys. And up. Okay, we're gonna come down to the ground. Okay, we've done these before. They are scapula push-ups. It's gonna feel like not much of a movement, but I want you to really focus. In fact, let's take it over to Jessie here. So you'll notice she can either be on her knees or she can extend her toes out. Elbows stay extended, just a micro bend, and she's just compressing through the chest and her shoulder blades are retracting and protracting, really moving away from each other as she pushes the ground away. So that's exactly what's happening. They're coming together as she compresses and moving apart as she comes back up. We've got another 24 seconds here. So your, your chest is depressing slightly but still keeping that length in the arm and pushing through the palm. Lots of strength for the rhomboids, those muscles that connect your shoulder blades to your spine. Really important group of muscles. Six seconds and rest. Okay, we're gonna stay here <laughs> and go into our cat cow. That's so funny. Hands below the shoulders, knees below the hips. I don't know, I giggle, I'm gonna giggle it. Okay, big exhale, round your back all the way up. So shoulder blades move away from each other. Let your head hang down, shake your head, shake your head. And then take an inhale, look up, flare those sit bones, belly button drops. Think of wagging your tail almost. Roll. This is like, this is the good stuff. Meat and potatoes. Yeah. Inhale. And exhale. I whip my hair back and forth. <laughs> no problem. You do not need to rotate your neck as you come up. It's just... <laughs> hair, lip gloss and hair is a bad combo, guys. Do you Eight remember seconds. like that Mac glass back Oh, yes. Day? That was the worst. No offense, I Mac. Still have it. I have no idea. It was like the gooeyest gloss. The like anytime gooeyest. you moved your hair or there was wind outside, like boom, and like your entire hair was Okay, so we're gonna reach for those pink thingies and we are coming into a quad alternate arm reach. So I want you to get your knees to anchor down the band and we're just stepping forward with the pink thingy, okay? Now from here, we wanna keep everything nice and quiet and we're just alternating which arm lifts to shoulder height out in front. Keep your gaze down at the mat. Yeah, there we go, one at a time. Think of reaching that arm all the way up. Yes, there we go. We've got another 10 seconds here. Try not to sink through those shoulders. And if the pink thingy isn't working for you, you can do it without, you can do it with a light dumbbell or just your body weight. We're just mobilizing and one. Okay, real quickly, I want you to get the top rungs of the pink thingy into your feet. Okay, like so. Then we're coming back to all fours as we anchor down through our palms. Now, we're gonna push into both palms evenly as we extend one leg all the way back. A nice long line at the back of the body. As we kick it out. People always say to me, I'm gonna break it. You're not gonna You're break it. You're definitely not gonna break it. In fact, I want you to try to break it. That's the intention. As you kick back, have the intention of trying to break it, okay? Add all of that force. Put all of that energy in. Sean's gonna be mad. Why? <laughs> if they break it? He's gonna get a whole bunch of pink things. Um, Tammy told me to try to break the pink thingy, and I did. So I'll, I'll clarify. We're not trying to break it with knives or sharp objects. <laughs> just with our body, okay? Three, 
two, and one. All right, next up. Let's get that board out of the way. <laughs> okay, so now we're reaching for that one dumbbell, singular dumbbell. See, shit happens, we just keep going. So we're anchoring down through the left hand, the right arm reaches all the way up to shoulder height, just as we were doing before, but now we're upping our weight. Really anchor down through our supporting hand before we take it over to the other side. You should feel, or you might feel rather, as you shift your weight, a lot of muscles in the core turn on to help stabilize you, okay? Watch that hand placement as you reset. You wanna make sure it's still under that shoulder. 10 seconds here. Last five. God, it's five pounds. Four, right? Three, it just goes to show. It's not about how heavy. Okay, we're gonna stay here into our high plank position. Walk your feet out, hands directly below the shoulders. Then we're gonna bend the right knee, tap it down and extend out. Bend the left knee, tap it out and extend. So we're just tap, tap, tapping. Gaze is down at the mat. Soft bend through the elbows as we tap our knees here. I know a minute seems like a really long time, but try your best to stay up here, tapping it out. <sighs> Halfway through, if you need to drop both knees for just a second and do a quick shell stretch, go for it, but come right back, okay? I don't want you to hang out in that shell stretch for too long. I'm not gonna give you permission to quit on yourself today, okay? 15 seconds. If you feel any strain in your shoulders, Push through those palms, okay? Keep pedaling out. Tap those knees. Last five, four, three, two, and one. Now go ahead and drop those knees. Push all the way back. There we go. Okay, we're gonna take it down to the ground, all the way down to our tummies. You can stack your palms one on top of the other if you'd like. We're gonna focus on that right leg, right hip extension. So think of reaching that right toe long behind you and then floating it up and back. But maintain a nice heavy pubic bone with the ground. So push your pubic bone into the ground, push those front hips into the ground, still suctioning your belly button up, but we're trying to reach that leg up and back. We stay on that side. Yeah, we're gonna stay on that right side. And if you can imagine, this is almost like the back stroke of a step. When you take a step and you push the ground away from you, we're accentuating that smile line, that little smile line underneath the bum. Focus on extending that hip up and back. We've got six. More seconds, not reps. Three, two, and one. Okay, so that right leg goes heavy. Reach out through the toes of the left leg, anchor down, lift. So now we're accentuating that little smile line under the bum on the left side. Anytime we do anything unilateral, we force our core to work a little bit harder to stabilize and keep us centered. So it's a nice way of mixing things up. Similar to the lateral work, it forces your brain to work a little bit more. Because you have to actually think about what you're doing rather than just moving through the motions. You seem to be in deep, con deep concentration. Oh, I just fell asleep. <laughs> you just woke me up, Brian. Okay. Breathe. These are so simple and so effective. There's no way for you to cheat. It's all glute. You can see it light up. And if you can't see it, take your hand back, touch your bum, and you will feel it. Yes. You will feel it light up. Well done. Okay, so now I'm gonna slide back a little bit so we can get into our swimmer poses. Palms extended fully. Hover your nose off the ground. We're gonna float our right arm, left leg, tap it down. Float our left arm, right leg. And then we're gonna pick up the tempo. Keep your gaze down. Put your face in the water, Jess. Swim, water. swim. That's it. Keep going. Point your toes. Wake up that back body. Ooh, I, I might sink. Cushion. <laughs> Is that an invention, yeah. a pubic cushion? I'm gonna make, I'm gonna have a mat or underwear with extra cushion on the pubic area. I'm sure that exists. Really? I don't know. Like build the bulge, but for women? Actually, it does. It's called the Jill. I don't know what they call it, but it's a thing in hockey. Instead oh, of, instead of a four jog. seconds, three, 
two, and one. We're gonna adapt that for mobility day. We're yeah. gonna wear jocks next I'm week. Wear one. <laughs> okay, in this same position, I'm gonna come back towards you. Plant those hands directly below the forehead. Bend your knees, walk your knees wide, and get your heels together. Okay, go ahead and flex those ankles as we take the soles of the feet up to the sky. Nice. So the range of motion here will differ. You might not be able to get those knees off the ground at all, or you might have a huge range of motion. The focus here is not so much on how high you can get it, but it's squeezing your heels together as you activate the glutes to lift. All the movements initiated from your glutes. So whether you're leaving the ground or not, I want you to feel the bum light up before we take it up. Oh, Ooh, hello. Like Where are the ankle weights at? <laughs> I need that cushion right about now. Insane. Oh, okay. Oh, we're going to flip it over onto our backs for a curl with a double toe press. Tap. So we're going to start with your hands behind your back. Remember, we want a light grip. So nice wide elbows curling up as we float the knees towards the chest, then both toes drift away from you to tap down. Big exhale, curl up. So I want you to focus here on not arching your back away from the ground. And as you curl up, you're really only trying to come to the base of those back body ribs. Focus on your exhale, get all of the air out of your diaphragm. Inhale and exhale. You'll notice the length is maintained at the front of my neck. So I'm not pulling my neck in towards the chest. It's a nice long neck. The front and the back, evenly lengthed. Tap it down. Can you see what we got up next, Jess? <laughs> is that a no? Is that a no? Okay, so we're gonna stay here. We're curling all the way up and tapping the inside of your opposite heel. So again, we're working a little bit of that cross body movement. We're not working in the same direction as always. We're forcing those lateral slings to activate. <sighs> Tap the inside of that ankle. <sighs> nice. So roll out onto your shoulder blades versus rounding the shoulders and curling that top body up. You wanna really stay square on the top of your body and just kind of roll along your shoulder blades. From side to side. From side to side. Look alive. Look. <laughs> I don't know. How do, wait, look alive. Oh, wait, is it look alive? You went. <laughs> <laughs> is it look alive? Is that what he says? Okay, now we're jackknifing. Now that's all I can think of. Oh, yeah, it is look alive, look alive. No, no, no. I can't even think right now. All I'm thinking about is Jake. All I'm thinking about is Drake. Okay, so we're starting in a nice big starfish position. As we exhale, I want you to reach to the outside of the opposite foot. Similar to the alternate heel tap we just did with our ab curl, our limbs are just extended. So there's a little bit more range of motion here. We're building on all of our principles. Look at us. We learned about range of motion earlier. And now we're focusing on our lateral game, okay? Seconds. Try and stick it, guys. We're almost there, last little bit, before we get to that finisher. Woo. That will- tuned for that 12 minutes. You have to stay, because it's called a finisher. Because otherwise, Woo. if you don't stay, then you technically didn't finish. And then you can't feel accomplished, because you didn't finish. So, <laughs> let's finish, <laughs> okay.